The NFL is the most profitable professional sports league in the country by a large margin. But when it comes to player contracts, they pale in comparison to the fat payouts NBA and MLB players receive. But just because the NFL isn't handing out salaries north of 100 million every day, doesn't mean there haven't been some truly awful contracts. And for these five players, that's exactly what happened. These teams thought they were making the right move, but instead, they turned out to be some of the worst contracts in NFL history. Dante Culpepper. When the Minnesota Vikings signed Dante Culpepper to a 10-year contract extension worth $102 million in 2003, it made sense. He just came off a season where he threw for over 4,000 yards and 39 touchdowns, which solidified that a giant payday was coming his way. Unfortunately for Minnesota, that's as good as it ever got for Culpepper. In his first season after signing the extension, Culpepper threw eight interceptions in just the first two games of the year. That season was further derailed by an ACL tear in week seven, and after backup QB Brad Johnson performed well enough to be considered the starter going forward, Culpepper forced a trade out of Minnesota. That trade landed him in Miami, where he only lasted one season. And despite playing four more years with several teams after Minnesota, he slipped into irrelevance and was altogether forgotten. Michael Vick. The Atlanta Falcons wanted to ensure that Michael Vick would be a Falcon for life with their godfather-like 10-year, $140 million deal they offered him after the 2004 season. Only problem? Vick only played two years of that colossal contract because he was sentenced to 23 months in prison for his involvement in an illegal dogfighting ring. Vick was suspended from the league for two years, but the Falcons still had to pay him $35 million. It was bad enough that Vic never came close to living up to that 10-year deal for the Falcons, but to make matters worse, he received another $100 million plus deal post dogfighting scandal. The Philadelphia Eagles took a gamble on the former pro bowler inking a six-year deal, but Vic never completed a full season in Philly due to injuries. And after the 2013 season, both sides came to an agreement to restructure his deal, making him a free agent before his contract was up. Vic spent two more years in the league before his career ended in 2015. Javon Walker. The Oakland Raiders thought Javon Walker could duplicate his 1,000 plus receiving seasons he produced in both Green Bay and Denver when they picked him up in 2008. Instead, what they got for their six year $55 million deal was two seasons in which he started a total of seven games and caught just one touchdown pass. Walker finished his time in Oakland with only 15 receptions for 196 yards. With 16 million guaranteed of his contract, that's almost $1 million per reception. Walker was released by the Raiders after underperforming and racking up injuries. Unfortunately for the Raiders, it cost them a little over $14 million to release him. Albert Hainsworth. Albert Hainsworth was coming off back-to-back -back Pro Bowl seasons with the Tennessee Titans. So when the Washington Redskins bet the house on him in 2009 with a seven-year, $100 million deal, it wasn't considered a bad move. At least, not at first. Hainsworth had a history of injuries and was considered by many to have a poor work ethic. And those issues started to creep up in Washington. His production dropped significantly over the two years in D.C., and he clashed frequently with head coach Mike Shanahan. Fight. After a subpar 2009 season where he started 12 games, Hainsworth was reduced to a bench player, failing to start in a single game. Washington didn't have to pay the full price tag of his contract, but for his two years of forgettable service, the Redskins had to shell out $38 million before releasing him. Nandi Asamoa. In the summer of 2010, Namdi Asamoah was considered the top free agent on the market. His resume spoke for itself, a three-time pro bowler, two-time first-team all-pro, and his 2006 season with the Oakland Raiders, where he recorded a career-high eight interceptions, was the third most in the league. The Philadelphia Eagles thought the five-year, $60 million signing was worth it. Even head coach Andy Reid said that Asamoah was one of, if not the best, cornerback in the league. But Asamoah did little to live up to that praise. In his two seasons with Philly, Asamoah totaled only four interceptions and was a major reason as to why the Eagles allowed 60 touchdowns in his two seasons there. After failing to agree with the Eagles to restructure his hefty contract, Philadelphia cut the once elite cornerback. After one season with the San Francisco 49ers, Asamoah retired as a member of the Oakland Raiders, the only place where he saw any success. 
Free agency is a risky game, and these are just some of the cautionary tales of high-risk contracts gone wrong.